Bhagavad Gita, text 3.2 With speech that seems equivocal, you have confused my intelligence. Therefore, please tell me clearly by which path I will attain the highest good. Here, Arjuna qualifies his question in the previous verse by stating that he finds no fault in Krishna. It is not Krishna's instructions that are faulty or confusing. They only seem so to Arjuna, who submissively asks for clarification. In the previous verse, we saw that Arjuna is predisposed towards devotion, such that the paths of action and knowledge are unattractive to him. Here, however, his question is centered on eligibility. It seems contradictory for a person to be eligible for action and knowledge at the same time. If a person is not eligible for the path of knowledge, he must tread the path of action until he acquires the requisite purity of heart which makes him eligible for contemplative life. If a person is eligible for contemplative life, he has nothing to do with the path of action. As Krishna will gradually reveal in this chapter, while knowledge is the goal of the path of action, it must be attained through the path of action and not prematurely adopted through an intellectual slight of hand. The solution to Arjuna's dilemma lies in understanding the secret of inaction within action that is the heart of karma yoga and ultimately in treading the path of devotion. In speaking about action in knowledge and knowledge itself, Krishna is subtly advocating one thing, devotion to himself as it is cultured by persons in developmental stages from karma yoga, for those whose minds are not yet pure to Kyan yoga, for those whose hearts are free from material desires. However, at this point in his discourse, Krishna overtly emphasizes only self-realization actuated through karma yoga and fructifying in jnana yoga. Krishna looks lovingly at Arjuna, who is so pure as to be intimately involved with Krishna as his dear friend. Yet, by Krishna's arrangement, has been placed in a mystical illusion so that Krishna could speak to human society through his dear most friend. Krishna thought, Arjuna is thinking that I have talked about two different things, but in fact I have spoken only about one thing, approached by different persons in different stages of devotional culture. Arjuna's real interest is in pure devotion, not karma or jnana, but I have only spoken about that indirectly, emphasizing for now detached work culminating in knowledge. Being my devotee, it is no wonder that he is hesitating.